Hey guys, Soberoni of Gene Day Reviews here with a boss guide for the upcoming Singularity, Camelot. This guide will contain spoilers, so that's your spoiler warning right now. If you do not want to be spoiled about the bosses, but you still want to know about Camelot and what you can do to prepare for it, I do have a Camelot guide that is spoiler free linked in the description below, so do check that out. But for those of you who are still here, let's talk strategy. So I'm going to cover these bosses in order of appearance, so chronologically, and if you want to skip ahead to any boss, uh, just know that in the description below I have timestamps so you can skip around to the video to whatever part you want to see. But first up, let's talk Hassan and Nidokris. I know that these two aren't really talked about much when it comes to bosses in Camelot, and there's good reason for that. They're pretty easy, but I just want to mention them because they do appear in a lot of chapters as bosses, so they're worth mentioning. Specifically, Hassans will appear as enemies and mini-bosses and bosses, so you're always going to want to keep a good offensive caster in hand. Neither Hassan nor Nidacris have a gimmick in any of their fights, so it's just a straightforward fight. All you need to do is bring a strong caster if you're fighting the Hassans, and a strong rider if you're fighting Nidacris. Not difficult at all, I just wanted to cover all my bases. So now that we're warmed up, let's talk about the first real enemy. So the first boss you're going to run into that's going to give you a bit of trouble is Ozymandias. He's going to appear in Chapter 2 as well again in Chapter 15. Now the first time you fight him he's going to have 256,000 HP and the second time you fight him he's going to have 90,000, 100,000 and 300,000 HP. So the gimmick for the Ozymandias fight is that he's always going to fight alongside casters. He's going to fight alongside Ifrit in his first fight, and then he's going to fight alongside Sphinx and Nito in his second fight. His other gimmick is multiple fights. So the second time around when you face him in Chapter 15, you're actually going to fight him three times in three different waves. It's going to be one wave where he has 90,000 HP and he fights alongside a Sphinx. Next wave he's going to have 100,000 HP and fight alongside another Sphinx. And then the final wave is 300,000 HP where he fights alongside Nidacris. In addition, in that last fight, he's going to start the battle with his max NP charge. So he's going to Noble Phantasm right away. This makes this a battle of attrition, really. You just have to kill him multiple times and be able to endure a lot of his damage. The general strategy you want to use against Ozymandias is you're always going to focus him. Because if you don't, he's going to spam Imperial Privilege. And if any of you were here for Nerofest, you know how annoying it is to have a servant spam imperial privilege and just basically be unkillable so make sure you stun lock him and burst him down immediately don't even worry about the casters he brings with him because they're weak they can be a little bit annoying and neither chris does have an aoe noble phantasm but overall they're weak just ignore them and kill ozymandias first although in the neither chris fight you might want to stop neither chris from noble phantasming because the instant death could wreck your team so as far as recommendations for servants, Jack and Carmilla are good choices. Even though she's not female, they still do a ton of damage. Shiki, Emiya, and Serenity are also great choices. Again, all single target Noble Phantasms. Or you can bring a Berserker if you lack any strong offensive assassins. You're also going to want to focus on stun locking him. So make sure you have Steno or Yuriel available so that you can constantly charm him and decrease his Noble Phantasm charge. And finally, you're going to at least want one or two riders. So I recommend bringing Rider Kentoki because he does obscene amounts of damage and he can pretty much one shot any of the casters that Ozymandias brings with him. If you have her, Drake is another great choice because she can spam out her Noble Phantasm. Of course, Ushi as always a fantastic choice as is Santa Alter and Medusa. They will all deal with the casters very efficiently and deal high damage. So with Ozymandias out of the way, let's talk about the next big threat, and that's going to be Gawain. He is going to appear in Chapter 4, as well as Chapter 17. He does appear twice in Chapter 4. The first time you see him, he's going to have 372,000 HP, and the second time he's going to have 427,000 HP. The gimmick for Gawain is, of course, decreased damage received between 30 to 80 percent and increase his noble phantasm charge by two per turn the first time you meet him in chapter four he's going to decrease damage received by 80 percent the second time you face him he's going to decrease damage by 50 percent 
and then the final time in chapter 17, he's going to have 480,000 HP and decreased damage by 30%. And all three times, he's going to have a special ability where he basically charges two NP bars per turn so that he can spam out his Noble Phantasm a lot faster. It is worth noting that the first time you fight him with his 80% damage reduction, all you have to do is 25% damage. So just bring his health down to 75% and he'll automatically end the battle. So you don't have to bring him down to nothing. But the other two times you fight him, you do and he can be very difficult because damage reduction is not the same as defense. So defense pierce does not go through damage reduction. You have to rely on dealing a lot of damage at once to him, and you're gonna have to rely on an arch team to stall him and delay his Noble Phantasm and stun him because otherwise he's going to wipe out your team with his Noble Phantasm. So your general strategy here is bring a very strong offensive servant that has bonus damage against Gawain, aka Uriel and Orion. They will do the most damage to Gawain by far because they have class advantage against him and they have a massive buff against males. So those two are gonna be your best bets against him. In addition, you're going to want someone to buff your defense and keep you alive. So Mosh is perfect for that, as is Tamamo, Waver, Jean, David, Irisville, and of course, if you have Steno, use her because she's going to be able to perma-stun Gawain if you can keep chaining her Noble Phantasm. So she's invaluable for this fight. I also recommend bringing Edison and Serenity because they have a Noble Phantasm seal. And the more you can delay Gawain's Noble Phantasm, the better. So take advantage of that. And if you don't have Uriel or Orion, then Gil, Tesla, and Robin Hood can work just as well because they are all archers with bonus damage against him. So you have plenty of options here even if you don't have Uriel or Orion. Just keep in mind you're going to want to use an offensive archer with a huge damage modifier against him. He isn't as scary as he seems at first, just make sure you play around his Noble Phantasm and keep him stunned. And after you deal with Gawain, the next Knight of the Round Table we're going to be facing is Mordred. Mordred is another servant you're going to be fighting three times. The first time you fight her is going to be in Chapter 7. You actually fight her twice, and then you fight her a final time in Chapter 17. Very similar to Gawain. The first time you face her, she's going to have 255,000 HP. The second time you face her is going to be in two waves. The first wave, she's going to have 162,000. And in the second wave, she's going to have... 272,000 HP and then finally in chapter 17 the final fight she's going to have 463,000 HP. The gimmick for Mordred is that she's going to resist Noble Phantasm seal and she's going to increase her Noble Phantasm charge to max every turn. So yes every single turn she will Noble Phantasm. Don't even bother reducing her Noble Phantasm charge because she can just get it back with her skills so it's just a waste of time. Instead, what you're going to want to do is rely on stuns. You can also rely on invincibility, evade, and defensive buffs. So the battle suit is pretty ideal for this scenario. But in any case, relying on stun and invincibility is definitely your best bet. So make sure you bring Jean, David, Iris Field, or Mosh. And offensively, you're going to want to bring Gil, Tesla, and Robin Hood because they have bonus damage and they have archer status. In addition, you can also bring Mysterious Heroine X because she does have the bonus damage and a stun, although her stun is a bit unreliable. And finally, Herc and Ku Alter are perfect for this. They can survive several Noble Phantasms from Mordred while also dishing out incredible amounts of damage. So just make sure you have a good stun locker on your team like Waver and someone who can make you invincible like Mosh, and it shouldn't be all that difficult. So after Mordred, the next night of the round table we're going to be fighting is Tristan. Tristan is going to appear in chapter 12 twice and then again in chapter 13. The first time you face him he's going to have 239,000 HP, 483,000 HP the second time, and then the final time is going to be 496,000 HP. Unlike the other Knights of the Round Table, Tristan is an archer, however with his gimmick it's irrelevant. Tristan's gimmick is immunity to poison, but in addition, he also does 150% damage to all classes except Shielder. He also receives neutral damage from all classes except Saber. 
in which case he receives 200% extra damage. So essentially, even though he's an archer, you're going to want to bring sabers against him, because those are the only things that have class advantage against him. It's very counterintuitive, but once you find that out, he's a very easy enemy to dispose of. Just bring a full party of sabers and spam your noble phantasm. As a bonus, his attacks have a ton of hits in them, so they will build up your servant's noble phantasm very quickly. Tristan is not difficult at all. In my opinion, he's the easiest of the round table knights. Once you figure out his weakness is sabers, it's just simple. However, I do recommend bringing Caesar, Okita, Rama, Nero Bride, or Saber Lancelot. All of them are single target sabers, so they can absolutely melt Tristan. If you do want to focus a bit more on your defense, then definitely bring Mosh as well as Steno because of the perma stun there. Also, Steno, Jean, David, Iris Feel, Shuten, Waver, Tamamo, and Media Lily are all great defensive options, and they will definitely come in handy here. Just keep in mind they will die faster because they're going to receive bonus damage from Tristan. Overall, Tristan is not a threat. Just bring sabers against him, and you will wipe the floor with him. And then once you're done with Tristan, the next knight of the round you have to deal with is Lancelot. Lancelot will first appear in chapter 13, but then he'll appear again in chapter 14. The first time you face him, he will have 244,000 HP, and the second time will be 378,000 HP. Lancelot is pretty simple as well. His gimmick is that he is a ruler class servant, and he has immunity to debuffs. So that means the only thing you can use against him that'll do any type of damage are Berserkers and Avengers. And because he has immunity to debuffs, you cannot stall him. He's not going to fall for stuns or charms or any of that, so you're just going to have to burst him down. The ideal strategy for this is just go full aggro with your Berserkers and your Avengers, buff them as much as possible, and unleash their Noble Phantasm. Because of that, I highly recommend bringing Jolter or Dante's if you have them, Herc, Kualtor, Vlad, Kentoki, Beowulf, Lubu, and Ibaraki are all fantastic choices because they're all single target berserkers. So those are going to be your only choices really for doing any damage to Lancelot. I also highly recommend bringing Nightingale, Waver, Nero Bride, Caesar, Iskander, Helena, David, or Shuten because they can provide some very good buffs. But as far as strategy for this fight goes, you really can't rely on stalling, you just have to go full aggro here. If you want to go more defensive instead, you can bring Jean or Shielder with you and maybe go for a longer type of victory. Now finally we reach the last boss and that is going to be Lancer Arturia. Surprisingly Lancer Arturia is not mentioned very much when people bring up the toughest fights in Camelot, but in my opinion next to Gawain she's very very difficult. She's probably the second most difficult or the first depending on what your team looks like. You're only going to fight her twice in chapter 17, the first time she's going to have 592,000 HP and the second time is going to be 671,000 HP. So right away she's a massive HP tank, 671,000 HP is no joke. As far as her gimmick goes, she activates charisma immediately when the battle starts, so she's going to have an attack buff. And she also spams her noble phantasm because she's going to spam her NP charging skill. And that's a problem because her Noble Phantasm goes through Evade and Invincibility, so you cannot guard against her Noble Phantasm. That makes her an incredibly difficult servant to stall against. So the strategy here is going to be buff your defense constantly. Invincibility and Evade will do nothing for you in this fight, so you're going to want to use Mosh to constantly have your defense buffed to mitigate as much damage as possible. You're also going to want to try to stun lock her, so Waver is another great choice for this. Just keep her from using her Noble Phantasm as much as possible. And offensively, you're going to want to take advantage of Anti-Arturia or Anti-Divine Servants to absolutely wreck her. Mordred, Siegfried, and Mysterious Heroine X are your best choices. They all do bonus damage against her, and they have defensive buffs or stuns. Again. Mysterious Heroine X's stun is harder to land, so I do recommend Morgan and Siegfried more because they also have class advantage. You also want to keep in mind that Edison and Serenity have Noble Phantasm seals, so that's another great strategy. And even though Evade and Invincibility are useless, Guts isn't, so Irisfeel is great for this. 
as are Herc and Ku Alter, so keep all of that in mind. And that covers the strategy for these bosses. Again, Camelot is only really difficult if you're not prepared for it. So as difficult as all of this sounds sometimes, it's really easy if you have the proper team and you're patient and you plan out your moves. There's no doubt that Camelot is more difficult than any of the other chapters we've had so far, but it isn't so difficult that you need all five star servants to beat it or anything like that. So it is absolutely doable even if you don't have a plethora of 5 stars and 4 stars. And heck, even if you do, if you don't plan properly, you're going to get destroyed. Just keep in mind these strategies and once you know these servants weaknesses, you should have no problem beating them. But if you do need any help and you want me to give an analysis on your teams, just let me know in the comments below what you're using and who you're having difficulty with and I will try my best to assist you. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like, and if you really enjoyed it, please consider subscribing. I will be doing the spotlights for the upcoming servants for Camelot later on this week, so do keep an eye out for those. And if you haven't already, please do join the party over on our Discord, follow us on Twitch, and follow us on Twitter. And I will see you all in the next servant spotlight. So, Baroni out. Later.